Moving from one expansion to the next always brings on that dreaded sense that you're about to throw all the gear you've collected over the past year or so into the bin and replace it with a bunch of forgettable questing greens. And it never feels good to replace that Megabiss item with just another random dungeon blue that will be a simple part of your gearing ladder. There's also all the old world items to consider too, so are any of them actually still good or useful? What will people be looking back to Classic or TBC and thinking, actually I could very much still use this item in Wrath. Today I wanted to go over some of the things to consider moving forward from TBC to Wrath of the Lich King. Items that are worth holding onto, pieces that may be useful, or things that you should expect to go up in value or suddenly start to become more in demand. Because I remember the transition from Classic to TBC and hearing people say, oh I'll replace my epics with questing items all of the time and that just didn't happen whatsoever. Players were still holding onto Naxxramas gear well into raiding and in many cases only epics from level 70 raids were superior to how powerful for that gear was. I mean, the set I used for tanking Leotheris on my Warlock still used some Nax Ramus gear. It was that good. If you manage to pick up a lot of the Sunwell gear during TBC, it will remain relevant during Wrath, just for a shorter period of time. Once you're hitting up the raid content, more or less everything will be an upgrade, and you should expect to begin replacing items by late game heroic dungeons. Here's a few comparisons just so you can visualize the gearing ladder a little bit better. This is a Pollen. It's a two-handed sword and drops from Kill Jaden and has the highest DPS on a melee weapon in TBC. This is Icia Barbed Spear, a bit of a reference to the old AV weapon there. It's a little bit short on DPS, but it has way less stats and no gems, and it's a reward from the Wrath version of Ring of Blood called the Amphitheatre of Anguish in Zuldrak. Next, the Hammer of Grief from Stonehall's Heroic. It's still a rare quality item, but ahead in terms of DPS, pretty similar when it comes to secondary stats, but no gems, meaning Apollon still looks pretty good. And this is an epic item level 200 piece of gear, called Demise that drops in Nax 10. At this point you can see it really is starting to pull ahead in terms of power. Of course this very much depends on how your items are for each slot you have equipped as well as the power of the Wrath level gear you have access to. Some items will get you further than others. It's also worth a mention that armor penetration changes in Wrath as well. In TBC it's very simple, one point of armor pen reduces armor by one. In Wrath it's now on a rating system and here's an example from TBC to Wrath just so you can see it. Armor pen in Wrath is a super valuable stat which only gets better the more you have of it, though you won't be hitting super high values until late game gear. Speaking more of the Sunwell gear, some classes retain very powerful set bonuses that can be used early game whilst waiting for upgrades to drop. On top of this, the T6 off pieces, the boots, braces and wrists are kind of pretty much insane for every single class as they are just so well itemized. I picked a few set bonuses which look as though they could be interesting for Wrath. The Rogue 2 set is 5% extra haste on slice and dice which is good for your assassination rogues out there. The Restoration Shaman 2 set reduces the cost of chain heal by 10%. The tier 6 2 set for Feral Druid tanks looks very solid and possibly even the 4 set for cats but equipping that many items from TBC may just be a bit too much. Oh and by the way Arcane tier 5 gets nerfed from 20% extra damage to 5% so rip that dream. Blizzard did think of that one. So overall TBC gear yes it's still relevant just for not as long as your classic gear was. There is also potential for a few niche classic items to be relevant, believe it or not. Classic really was the Wild West for balance. To this day, physical classes are still using Badge of the Swarm God from AQ40 as a trinket swap when it comes off of cooldown. It just gives a very solid amount of armor penetration. I'm assuming this will be the same early Wrath. Scarab Brooch from AQ40 was famously used in the world first 25 man Lich King heroic kill by Paragon. The overhealing for shield effect is super valuable on that fight as it prevents a number of super dangerous mechanics from getting out of control. And finally, even an item from Blackwing Lair Siege use. Silene's Impending Scarab has long been an item with a strong mix of block value and rating on it, and there aren't really many other items that fit this niche either. Particularly, Warriors equipped a super high block gear set for the adds on Anubarak 25 Heroic. They have an aura that empowers other adds, but with enough block rating, their damage is reduced where you can tank them on top of the boss and allow your DPS to cleave them down without having to spend too many resources on them. Let's go back to some TBC items though. There are a few in particular that are worth a mention. First of all, Nightmare Seeds. They increase your max health by 2000 for 30 seconds and share a cooldown with Hellstone and everything else in that category. And at the start of Wrath of the Lich King, they just straight up get removed from the game without even appearing in a patch note. Sometimes having that extra buffer of HP is better than a health stone when you need to survive a big hit. Over time in TBC, Nightmare Seeds have been steadily on the rise in price due to this, and well with the sun well out now, that trend is only going to continue. 
you. If you have a bunch of these lying about or have a character with herbalism, they should be a pretty good gold maker at the moment and will soon enough become a discontinued item. Another item that shares a cooldown with the health stone are flame caps. These are farmed from around Zangamash. They add a bit of fire damage to attacks as well as increasing fire damage by a moderate amount. Needless to say, fire mages become one of the best performing DPS specializations in the game by Wrath of the Lich King. It's an extra consumable to min-max your character as well as just generally being used by any DPS who wants to push their performance. Definitely an item to think about holding on to or to start farming for when they become much more in demand. If you still have a riding set then it will be relevant, well for a very short period of time that is. Your riding crop will still give movement speed whilst you are level 70 and will stop working exactly one level after that. If you're going hard on leveling though it's a very small edge but an edge over other players. If you're a pet or mount collector you can start building up your collection right now. Part of the quality of life changes made in Wrath were adding a tab where both pets and mounts can be stored. Instead of them being in your bag now you learn them and you can drag them onto your action bar from the interface. There are currently loads of companion pets from Classic and TBC that are bind on equip. Once achievements roll around and people start actively collecting these kind of things a lot more there's going to be way more demand for them compared to right now. So they're either going to be worth hanging on to or just thinking about getting any off the auction house which seem really cheap. And just in case you are wondering no Wrath of the Lich King does not have transmog or void storage you have to wait until the next expansion after that until that feature will happen. Speaking of achievements though one of them has always stood out to me as extra special for well for reasons the insane now if you've ever done this grind on later expansions you know it's grinding out seven of the most inconvenient and time consuming reputations possible all the way to exalted well in wrath it's not seven it's eight the extra one that was later removed is for Shendrala. Now if you've played Classic I can all but guarantee you do have some of this rep done with this obscure faction already just through having run Dire Maul. The way this rep is farmed, literally the only way it's farmed, is by chain handing in quest items for the various Arcanums from Lawkeeper Lydros in Dire Maul North. This requires one of three Librum drops from the Dire Maul instances, those being of focus, protection or rapidity, along with large brilliant shards, these aren't hard to get from a disenchanting, pristine black like diamonds which are really cheap at the moment because they're not really used for anything and an untradeable tertiary ingredient all of which you can farm right now if you're really set on getting this title. These are the skin of shadow from Scholomance, frayed abomination stitching from Stratton Dead or blood of heroes which spawn all over the place in western plaguelands and a lot more commonly in eastern plaguelands. It's 36k rep from zero to exalted so that's going to be 72 hand ins total. Oh and the Librams are unique so get a friend with engineering for the portable mailbox unless you really want to run back and forth after every single hand in. Much along the same line as this, people will be handing in card decks for Dark Moon Fair Exalted as well, so expect those to see a bump in demand once Wrath rolls around as well. Finally, a whole host of items you definitely don't want to be getting rid of now if you have them from leveling are all the low level herbs and gems. It's absolutely no secret, but dual crafting is expected to be a top tier profession for pretty much every single raiding character in Wrath. A lot of people will be re-rolling to the this profession during the pre-patch or during launch. Pretty much every gem should go up a decent bit in price just so people can level. So at least think about getting your main set up and what they will want in advance. The absolute same can be said for engineering and both engineering and jewel crafting need bars too such as mithril, true silver, thorium and so on. On my server thorium bars are already going for over one gold 50 each which is just insane and I don't expect that to stop going up anytime soon. If you're leveling a herbalism alt or just herbing in general I'd hold the herbs for the time being as well, Inscription will be releasing in Wrath where you need to more or less disenchant herbs so you get inks which you can then make various items with. Much like the other two professions here, expect prices to go up big time so again either hold to sort out what you want on your own character or to make some gold when the time comes. And that's about everything, a bit of a mix between items you have, ones you can think about getting and maybe some potential investments there for you as well. Let me know if there's anything else big you feel is worth holding on to or will be good in Wrath. And as always thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I shall see you on the next one very soon.